Spencer. Hey, Mike, can you Will you, you all close the door, door please? <laughs> We have a quorum, so we'll start with resolution RS-2018-1054. Uh, Councilman O'Connell has written a letter to amend, and it is, it reduces the jailer's fees authorized under Tennessee Code annotated 8-26-105 that are assessed against misdemeanant prisoners incarcerated in Davidson County jails. Do so you have anybody from the sheriff's department here? Yes. What does that do to y'all? Nothing. <laughs> Answer that. That's what I was looking Wait. for. Okay, uh, so moved. What? Second. Well, hey, I like a, that. Yeah, go ahead. No, go ahead. There, there's a letter to amend. So we're actually, if Councilman O'Connell isn't here, do we defer? Yeah, he's he's, he's got, got a letter. letter right? it's you don't have to defer if he's got a letter. Okay. Right. Councilman Prodman? I, I was going to ask ask about the sheriff's office. What about the police, uh, uh, metro government? What, have they figured out exactly? I think it was in the in the analysis how much it was. Uh, they were going, they generate through these fees. Right. Um, so uh, the amendment is from essentially Talia. Uh, she has expressed her comfort level with this with passage of the amendment. Mm -hmm. uh, in answer to your question, uh, we have fees assessed through general sessions and fees assessed through state courts. Mm -hmm. The rate of return, the rate of collection on the fees through general sessions is about 17%. The rate of collection on the state fees is just under 9%. Um, and I believe Councilman O'Connell's <coughs> rationale is if someone is in jail on the basis of a misdemeanor offense, that means they can't make bond. That means they don't have two cents to rub together, and this right. is just perpetuating a problem that we're not collecting in the first place. But it is there is an appreciable amount just from that 8.9% and 17%. I mean, the totals for general sessions, the totals assessed or uh, over the past, well, last fiscal year was $325,000 and change. So it's not unappreciable. Finance believes that there will be cost savings and the fact that this doesn't have to be administered anymore. No money spent on collection efforts that have been essentially fruitless. So they've expressed their support or, or at least satisfaction with it. So they don't have a net amount, do they? The cost of collection versus what the, uh, the savings versus what, it, what the amount they pick they do uh, collect each year. So for the past three years, just starting with the general sessions amount, if you look at the last three fiscal years, uh, the general sessions cases have uh, collected a million forty-three thousand dollars. What they've assessed is six point two million. So that's why we're only collecting about seventeen percent of of the total. It's not an unappreciable amount of money. Right. It's just far less than what's actually being assessed. So they don't know how much they'd save though, by not utilizing the collect collection agency Correct. and other administrative costs. Right. So the amendment you'll see does two things. Number one, it bumps the effective date until the beginning of the next fiscal year, July 1. Okay. So we don't have to encounter it now. The second thing it does is puts in Talia's notion that this will result in a cost savings, but it asks the departments, for those responsible for collecting, report to finance what your cost savings are, what those are that are realized. Sure. Any other questions? Is there a motion? I need a motion. I'll second. All right. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any against? Resolution RS 2018-1069, Bircher and Roberts, accepts a grant from the Tennessee Highland Rim Healthcare Coalition to the Nashville Fire Department for the purchase of battery-operated remote lighting and rescue stretchers. And Chief Swan is here with us today. So moved. You would like to? Well, I've got my expert here, uh, actually, uh, Chief Smith, that has the information on that. You want to give a little insight on it, Chief? Sure. What we've asked for on this particular grant is 10 of the Pelican hard shelled remote lighting systems. And what the plan is for those, the immediate plan anyway, is to put them on our 10 district chief's vehicles. That way, when they respond to a scene, whatever it might be, 100 yards off the road, they've got area lighting immediately without having to pull off heavy rescue. Inside of structures, buildings, when light goes out, they've got a great source of lighting. And the batteries are 
are pretty uh, pretty healthy. They'll last about six months without a charge, and they are char rechargeable. I mean, if they're not used, of course. Yeah. Um, so that's the immediate uh, rationale for the for the purchase of these, and then of course the four Stokes baskets that'll go on our ATV vehicles for our big events downtown. Get patients out quickly. Great idea. Yeah. yeah. yeah this makes us do our job a lot better and more efficient. So it's important. Sounds yeah, better and efficient is good. That's right. Or anything. I'm good with it. Do we have a motion? We already have it. We already have it. All four? Aye. Aye. Me against. Great. Resolution RS 2018-1070, Bercher and Roberts, approves an application for a hazardous materials emergency preparedness grant from the Tennessee Emergency Management Agency to the Metro government. And I... So moved. So it's for $45,000, and Mr. Michael Armistead is here to discuss that with us. Sure. So um, it's a product that's been out for about 10 years. It's called Fire Ice. And what it is, it's a, it's a uh, food-grade type material. So it's environmental friendly. It's non-toxic. You can actually eat it if you wanted to. It's, it has the consistency of applesauce. But no taste. No taste. In the kitchen over. <laughs> <laughs> and so, uh, what we're, what it does is it's an amazing product. So if anything that's on fire, it snuffs it out. Even to magnesium or lithium fires, heavy metals that burn at 3,400 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, and it doesn't just like. There's currently not an extinguisher that we've ever known that would put out a magnesium fire. Really. Transformer, transformers. Fires. Yeah, it's an amazing um, um, uh, uh, device. And actually, but, uh, they did an incredible job of researching and bringing this to our department. And again, it's just, uh, I think last night I mentioned it's sort of like a, a fire extinguisher on steroids. It, it uh, gives you the ability to actually extinguish these metal fires, and, and it does an incredible job. So. Yeah, uh, and, and what we're looking at in the department is not only just cost savings. You know, for uh, uh, property lost and that stuff, but it's what we save. So this also, you can spray it on exposures of, of homes that are close to a, a large residential fire. It will not catch fire. Uh, period. I mean, you can put it on your hand and put a blowtorch to your hand, and it it will not. Mike, would you mind letting them do that? It sounds extreme, but it you know, it's a barrier device. So we went around yeah. demonstrating it, and we used it in our department. And it, it was we were getting reports back, and like New York's had it, Boston's had it. They they even assigned a guy. They call him the can guy. And we had guys come back saying we put our entire room and contents fully involved on fire with one can. In it. It's incredible, yes. and you can eat it at the end. Well, some place <laughs> you can get water. Yeah, and, and plus and the fire is cheap. It's yeah. Good. It's it's, uh, for a two and a half gallon uh, canister, which is like your regular uh, fire extinguisher, it's about $25 currently. Uh, and for doing the adduction system for, for large, like a home or something like that, it's $250 for a 25 gallon tote. Wow. 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 And, and the tote will, will coat a regular, like a 2,000 square foot home. Incredible. Oh, yeah. mm. uh, I'll move it. Okay. Put out a fire from hot chicken. Mm. I don't know about that. <laughs> Natural hot chicken is hard to beat. Yeah, it <laughs> not hot chicken. It'll, it'll snuff it out. All four? Uh, Any against? All right. Bill BL 2018-1101, Roten, Bircher, and others, authorizes the Director of Public Property to enter into a sublease agreement and a consent by lessor to sublease agreement with Strive Collegiate Academy, Inc., who are the sub-lessors, and Donaldson Corporate Center, LP, who are the lessors. No, y'all did. One is sub lessor and one is lesser. For temporary office space at 3055 Lebanon Pike, Nashville, Tennessee. So moved. We have a second. Okay. okay. Um, Roten, Bircher, and others aren't here. Any others? Mike, who are the others? Um, it, I could say that you don't have any other co sponsors in the room, but because it has already been considered and adopted by budget, You've got a committee's approval, so that's all you need. You okay. Could. Okay. Great. I'm in for approval. All, 
All, how many for? Um, any against? <laughs> Public Safety Beer and Regulated Beverages is adjourned. Hang on a second. I want to extend our condolences to the fire department. Yeah. Yes. Thank you. Thank you very much. We don't have a lot of details on each other. We lost two in 24 hours. Yes. I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah. I think we can do it. Young men, too. Very young men. Cards and prayers are with you.